Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, we have big news on AMD's super resolution. Dell may have intentionally disabled GPU cores, new monster AMD GPU releasing, and specs, plus release on Ryzen 6000 CPUs and RX 7000 GPUs. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, I've been talking about AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution since the company first announced it at Computex. And the reason is because it's set to work on multiple GPUs, including much older cards and NVIDIA, even older NVIDIA cards that their own DLSS doesn't support. Well, Microsoft just confirmed to IGN that FSR will work on their newest Xbox Series X and S consoles, meaning they're set to get a big performance jump on games that support it. Of course, that's not a big surprise since we know they're built from AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. Regardless, it's a huge reason I think AMD's version could completely overtake NVIDIA's DLSS, even if it's slightly worse. Basically, developers will already have to use FSR for consoles, and given it also works on NVIDIA's GPUs, there wouldn't be a big incentive to put in the time for a tech that only works on RTX 3000 cards. Of course, we'll have to see how good AMD's version is, but given the numbers they're quoting are right, things are not looking good for NVIDIA. But first, if you're trying to learn computer science or really anything in the STEM field, there's one proven way to learn. You've got to actually do it. And there's no better place than with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the website and app that's built from that very principle. With Brilliant, you get to jump right into solving problems and you get coached the whole way through. Plus, Brilliant has something for everyone, no matter your skill level. From the basics of computer science to neural networks or even computational biology, at the end of the day, Brilliant gives you the tools you need to successfully learn STEM. So don't put it off anymore. Join me and a community of 9 million others by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, I have an update to the recent story I did on Alienware's M15 notebook disabling cores in the RTX 3070. Now, I mistakenly interpreted the original story as Dell releasing a new vBIOS for the M15 to re-enable the cores. Instead, the users took a BIOS from another product which Dell suggests not doing, but I'll get to that in a second. First, there's an update from the channel Jared's Tech, where he received a response from Dell that claims they intentionally disabled those cores. Since then, Tom's Hardware reached out to Dell and they're claiming that it's all an accident and that they'll have it fixed mid-June. Oh, and like I said, don't install that other BIOS as it could cause issues. Either way, that's obviously two different answers, and while I would think the contact from Tom's hardware is more accurate than just a support message on Twitter, the answer Jared's tech got was really specific. Plus, get this, the disabled cores were only done for notebooks using Ryzen 5000 CPUs. That definitely seems a bit odd, though it may have been a simple mistake, I'm not sure. Either way, do not install that BIOS I mentioned before. Next up for today, if you keep up with the channel, you know that a little while back, I went over a reference water-cooled AMD GPU that was supposedly cancelled. That card was based on the RX 6900 XTX GPU. Well, it was recently spotted inside a Chinese pre-built system as the 6900 XT LC, and at first we assumed it was likely a China-only product, but the GPU has since been spotted as a retail product on a site in Brazil. Basically, it looks like AMD is in fact releasing it, possibly a response to the 3080 Ti. And there's a few really interesting things to note. For one, it shows a release date of June 30th, so if it's coming out, it's likely coming really soon. Now, it could just be a third-party card that Sapphire made to look like a reference card, but given it doesn't say Sapphire anywhere on the card, it likely isn't. One interesting factor is that it claims to have 18 gigabit per second GDDR6 memory. And while that is technically possible, it's not something we expect without GDDR6X. Basically, it could be a typo, but maybe not. Either way, it does get a decent boost in frequency, though the price tag, which translates to 4,660 US dollars, is scary. With that said, the site already has some pretty high markups on current products, so it could easily just be that. 
Either way, it's definitely an exciting product, though it'll likely be even harder to find than a needle in 40 haystacks on the moon. And lastly for today, we have more information on the upcoming Zen 4-based Ryzen 6000, as well as the release date for it and AMD's RX 7000 GPUs. So let's get right to it. First up, Gamers Nexus recently shared a couple internal slides allegedly from AMD. Now, they originally received it a year ago, but held on to it because they couldn't confirm any of the information. Luckily, new leaks from Executable Fix confirmed quite a few details, so Gamers Nexus decided to show them off. So starting things off, you can see there are a couple discrepancies between this and the newer leaks. First, it shows a maximum TDP of 105 watts, while the newer leaks suggest more. Next, it shows Raphael as a notebook part, but it's only supposed to be Zen 4 desktop CPUs. Ultimately, this doesn't mean it's wrong, as things certainly change the closer we get to launch. When it comes to the new information, this tells us that the chiplet design is codenamed Durango, and it's built from TSMC's 5 nanometers, while the IOD is built from their 7 nanometer process. This also shows that it's configured with up to two 8-core chiplets, so 16 cores will likely be the maximum core count. The biggest thing here is that it confirms next-gen CPUs will come with an integrated GPU to give it, quote, entry-level desktop graphics performance. The next slide shows an AM5 package, but there's also another slide that shows it on AM4, which means there could be at least some Zen 4 chips made to work on AM4 boards, likely a low-power SoC. Either way, this is some really interesting information, but we aren't done just yet. In a recent tweet from known leaker Vegeta on Twitter, you can see that he claims that both Zen 4 and RDNA 3 are set to be released in Q4 of next year. Of course, that's pretty far away, but we know that AMD plans to release their 3D Ryzen 5000 parts first. Plus, basically no one can buy a new GPU right now, so it makes sense to wait a bit for that release. Still, Q4 of next year is pretty far off. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's new GPUs and CPUs, or are you just annoyed that Dell could have disabled cores intentionally? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.